Hi and welcome to the first episode of my podcast. My name is Conley Harris and this is my YouTube page. Wait, but this is also supposed to be posted on podcast. Well, if you follow me at Harris Hikers on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram, then you'll see my page. But the reason why I'm posting a podcast is because there's so many th- topics that I really just want to dive in and that I can't really be put into like a 10 like five minute long three minute long video on TikTok or Instagram so we're diving into a podcast so the first thing I want to talk about is as you guys know this past year this past summer it's October now in July we hiked as in we me and my sister and our friend Jamie we hiked Tour du Mont Blanc which basically is like a 105 mile loop that goes through France Switzerland and Italy and it like you do the circumference of Mont Blanc which is 16,000 feet high it's kind of a massive mountain you guys like that thing is huge it's massive but that's what she said okay but it was just such an amazing experience and I'm so blessed and honored that I got I got to be sponsored on that trip and got a lot of those expenses waived by decathlon so shout out to decathlon for that but I the planning process for doing an international trip especially when you live in America can be a little bit complicated because when you're planning to hike something like Tour du Mont Blanc it's very there's a lot of things to work out and I have to give a shout out to my sister Delaney I'll have her on the podcast eventually but she did a lot of the planning but there's a little bit I do know and I want to share with you guys First things first, I have to note that we literally planned to hike this trail three and a half weeks before we hiked it. We were initially planning on hiking um, John Muir Trail that goes through the Sierras in California. That's what we were planning on doing this summer. There was a ton of rainfall this past year. And so what ended up happening is a lot of the bridges were down on um, in the JMT or on that like land area in the Sierras. And so we couldn't hike it and so we were scrambling to find another trail to do and we'd always wanted to do Tour du Mont Blanc and we're like okay this is this is our moment this is our opportunity let's go so booked the plane tickets did the whole thing I actually I'm not saying to book your trip last minute because it was a little bit stressful however I will say we got crazy good flight deals because it was three weeks before like who buys an international flight three weeks before not normal or in or sane people so we got our flights for about twelve hundred dollars a piece to Geneva in Switzerland so an absolute steal that's like really really cheap for those of you who don't know for a flight to internationally so we got that um And when we planned this hike, it's like I said before, it's so complicated because like in America, we want to know where we're staying at night. We want to know any potential threats. We want to know what our next meal is going to be. We need to know what exact coordinates are we staying at camp, which is super valid. A lot of us hikers in America are very like much we plan ahead. That's just not the way things are ran in Europe, which I we came to realize since we were there. And we um, and then we began to understand why it was so hard to plan because people in Europe will just like show up with their backpack and be like, oh, well, I guess I'm just going to hike it. Like they're a lot more chill about things, which I'm not saying I didn't like. I, I kind of loved the vibes. The vibes were super chill there. And so very much more like relaxed. I'm going to start at the very beginning of the trip. I'm going to kind of explain the trip to you guys while simultaneously giving you tips on what to do and what not to do, so on and so forth. So once we flew into Geneva, um, we ended up having to get a like a car to the trailhead. And that we booked a couple days in advance. It was called Mountain Drop-Offs. And you book like, this is when we're leaving. This is like the time you pick us up. Here's our flight information. And we need to go to a certain campground. Oh, so Mountain Drop-Offs picked us up and took us to the campground we were staying the night before we were going to start the trail. We had flew in at 10 a.m., in the morning and so we didn't we actually got to the campground at like around 2 p.m so we had time to go to the grocery store stock up a little bit before we started the trail the next day jet lag was really rough but that's okay something to know about hiking Tour de Mont Blanc is everything is so freaking hard to pronounce and you can almost guarantee you're saying everything wrong and someone's gonna laugh at you so just put you're just gonna be embarrassed the entire time so just plan on it I personally get so embarrassed especially when like I feel like I'm being like a tourist and I just felt like terrible and I just had to accept it I was like you know what like I'm gonna pronounce things wrong they're gonna know like I'm probably they're gonna feel like I'm an uneducated American whatever 
whatever. So I had to move past it. You got to like kind of move past it, but you're going to pronounce things wrong. And for that reason alone, I, I don't want to have pronounce things wrong to you guys. So I'm going to list the name of like the campsites and stuff like in the caption description to give you like says some details about the itinerary. Um, but I know for fact where we came, our mountain drop us took us to Shamani. I know for sure it's how you spell it because I got corrected so many times and we stayed in a campground that I don't know how to pronounce. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to put it in the description. And this was kind of, this campground was kind of like a, um, you pay and then you camp anywhere on the, on these people's property. Really interesting. And then there was like hundreds of people who were either doing a section of Tour du Mont Blanc or doing the f- entire Tour du Mont Blanc that were just staying there. There's a lot of different places to start Tour du Mont Blanc. And so we came into Chamonix and then that next morning when we woke up and started the trail, we ended up taking a bus to Le Ouche. I know how to pronounce that one too. It's pronounced, it's called Le h-o-u-c-h-e-s and it sounds like hooches and that's what i was calling it which is so embarrassing but then we had some of these guys correct us thank god for them um and they told us it's leush so and then we took a bus to leush and started the trail there i want to relieve you guys of some pressure and planning there is only so much you can plan like i said previously It is so hard to plan an international trail, but I would rest assured in this fact that internationally, you don't, people are friendlier and you don't need to have every single freaking thing planned. Like, I think like I literally, I had to pray my anxiety away because I really had to get it to God because I was so anxious just about where are we staying? We don't have a campsite tonight, blah, blah, blah. Like you just like have to trust that like internationally like things are just done differently and like if you do have to camp somewhere random you're gonna be safe however there is specific camping laws so i'm gonna try to break this down for you if you're not staying at a refuge you have to abide by each country has a different like law for camping um a lot of the times you can there's campsites that you can book once you get there so it's first come first serve so you show up to the campsite and again I'll put them in the description but a lot of these campsites that you can just show up and then put up your tent and then like pay like a really small fee that fee was usually like 15 to 20 euro a person or a tent it just depended a person or a tent that was kind of like the vibe so whenever you return your money at the airport you exchange money you have to make sure I would say per person make sure you have 150 euro and 100 francs that would be my estimate per person so just keep that in mind if you're exchanging money I didn't include that but yeah if you're exchanging money 150 euro 100 francs per person that should get you through the entire trail but unless you're doing like crazy bougie stuff then not but like we like kind of were just getting food here and there and on the trail where did I leave off okay so camping rules most of the time like I said most of the time you can camp at a campground first come first serve however there is those instances where you can't get into a refuge and there is no campground nearby and you have to camp so for example we didn't run into this problem really anywhere but Italy and in Italy we had in the middle shockingly in the middle of a lightning storm we had to set up camp somewhere like random not random but like off the trail and I want to note that they have like very strict rules and they will take it if you don't do this so you have to make sure that you don't pitch your tent until sundown so you can camp in Italy you just have to wait for the sun to go down then you can pitch your tent they're like if you like hang out there and you have like your sleeping pad out like whatever like you can hang out just don't you can set up everything you can cook dinner whatever you need to do just don't set up that tent until the sun goes down capiche there is a rule in Switzerland that you have to camp I think it's like above a certain elevation I don't know what that is I'm pretty sure I'll put in the description below uh, what that exact number is and so but that only really applies if you're not going to specific campgrounds I think we only did that one night where we didn't stay at a campground because like, our itinerary didn't like line up like we had like we would have to hike like a 10 extra miles to get to a campground so we did that in Italy I don't recommend when you're in Switzerland getting up that high to camp can be sketchy so don't do anything sketchy out there like don't go off trail and climb like literally rock climb up to like the highest heights of the mountain (laughs) please don't do that that would stress me out okay refuges refugees refuges bonjour that sounds so white that's really tough okay but anyway um refuges you're going to pass them along the way like I said you could be staying them you might not be 
I also want to know that we did this trail in nine days. We did an eight nights, nine days, which is pretty fast. I'm not going to lie to you like that. Would, I would consider that more of an advanced itinerary. Of course, there's people who like run it. So that's like the most advanced itinerary. Like, I'm not going to run that thing. But um, yeah, I would say like that was a considerably more advanced. That's probably like 13 to 14 miles a day, probably like an average of 5,000 feet of gain a day. So a little bit harder. Uh, most people I would say do it in like 12 to 13 days. I feel like is like the average. Um, so it's a very difficult trail just to also say. I think a lot of people like are like, oh, Tour du Mont Blanc, everyone does it. Let's go have this easy stroll around Mont Blanc. No, it is a very challenging trail. My friend Jamie Lambert actually hiked it and I was cracking up because she hiked a little bit after me and like she's like filming the days where it was like just like so steep and so hard. Like Europeans don't know how to do switchbacks. They just don't. There's no switchbacks is not in the Europeans vocabulary. They only know straight up. And so it's just an absolute calf burner. 100% which I do plan on coming with the Trudeau Mont Blanc like training plan so stay tuned for that I'll let you know when that when that's up but it's just a very hard trail so prepare for it to be difficult it's not a run in the park okay I'm getting off topic back to refuges refuges are important because these are the places that you can stay if you book them however we didn't book them one it's expensive two we were (laughs) booked the trip way too late for that refuges most of the time we'll have food for you to eat if you're passing by. So say you're just a hiker, you're not staying at that refuge. You can probably pass by and get coffee, a croissant, something like that. I was told before going on the trail to don't pack. Everyone was telling me, don't pack a lot of food. Don't pack a lot of food. Don't pack a lot of food. Like that was like the number one advice. Don't pack a lot of food. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to be balling out at these refuges. Like give me eggs, give me bacon, give me croissants. Like I'm here for it. But that was not really how they rolled. And so I did pack food. I think I packed like a freeze dried meal and like a snack per day. So like just like emergency food. And I'm so glad I did because if I would have listened to those people advice, this people's advice about like not packing pretty much any food, I would have literally died of starvation on that trail because a lot of the times with these refuges, they don't open till 1 p.m. or like 2 p.m. So say like you pass the refuge at like 8 a.m. in the morning they like won't have food for you you can't wait around after mile two of your day to like eat so there was like a lot of times where like they just didn't serve to one or like they would like randomly close because like they don't have like rules and laws like that in Europe so like they would randomly close or they'd randomly run out of food so there's a lot of times where I thought I was going to be getting a big meal and didn't especially the first four days I think of the trucks those are like the most crowded days um if when starting in Laouche those are for sure the most crowded days and so I felt like that they either ran out or didn't have a lot so I maybe was clearing t- maybe 2,000 calories the first four days but once I hit later on the trip there was a lot more food available especially when you passed like some of the towns so that helped a lot and you do pass another thing to note on this trail you do pass a lot of like small towns that you can restock and get food and like stack up on snacks and eat a lot like so a lot of, a lot of the times I didn't have a lot of food to eat during the day but whenever it hit a town I literally consume like 3,000 calories at once because like I just didn't know when I'd have like another big meal again but I would say if I were to do it over again I would pack a freeze-dried meal three snacks for the first couple days and then after that just a free freeze-dried meal and one snack the rest of the days because the rest of the days was fine it was just the first couple that I was a little malnourished one of the things I need to know is I got in massive trouble. Well, not trouble. I had, I got some, I got into some beef with a girl from Italy and it wasn't, I didn't have beef with her. She had beef with me and I honestly felt really bad about it, but also she was kind of being a B-I-T-C-H to me about the entire thing. But basically they have very specific trash cans. I had been to London, so I like knew like, okay, like four trash cans whatever whatever easy no Italy and France have like 20 different trash cans with symbols I don't know what they mean and words they don't mean but just make sure you're throwing your trash away in the right trash can because they will murder you if you don't well not not actually but like they will say something they'll call you out and I'm not that's probably a good thing they are but like they're just not nice about it so make sure you're throwing your stuff away in the right trash can before you go I have a big tip for you guys that you need to do I want you to unless you're 
camping kind of like dispersed camping i want you to like if you know where you're camping for a night i want you to learn how to pronounce each name correctly not a lot of words i don't need all the words of the dictionary i think you should do every night where you're staying learn how to pronounce that because like also it's like we pronounce things so wrong (laughs) we try to do it in our in our english way so it gets like it can also like i don't want someone to give you guys the wrong directions because we're pronouncing it wrong because that literally happen to us so just make sure you know where you're staying and how to pronounce where you're staying so if you have to talk to someone you can there's a lot of english speaking people on the trail because most of the people do speak english as well as french you won't see a ton of americans but you will run into a few here and there assuming that the people watching these videos are from america let's talk about water so the water situation actually is super nice and way more convenient than anything we have in america so basically they have like these little i'll insert a picture but they have like these little like spouts that you can that their filtered water comes out of like you do not need to filter that water i am the most sensitive person to water i will get sick in 2.2 seconds i get sick over anything you can name it i'm sick so this water is so so safe you can drink it um you can fill up your water bladder or water bottle whatever you're doing and really safe it usually has like a sign and it says drinkable but in french i don't remember what that word was but yeah you can you can drink that water and i just i mean i would still bring a wa- i'm just a scaredy cat so I, I personally would still bring a water filter just in case just because i don't want to be ever at a point in a trail where i don't have access to clean water so if i were you i'd bring one the sawyer squeeze is super light anyway it weighs almost nothing so i would just bring it just in case it will rain on this trail it will rain and it will rain hard especially if you're doing it in july august where there's kind of like those summer storms <laughs> you guys there was i have so i have like my coros watch that i hike with that like tracks miles elevation gain and all that stuff and it also track my sleep and recovery like oh how well my body's recovering what's going on and my watch <laughs> consistently stayed under 15 percent recovered the entire trip like my body was not recovering and i think it's because the lack of sleep because of how bad the storms were at night it is p- very much possible we went on like a bad week where there's a lot of storms but like every night there was some type of crazy lightning i thought i was gonna get struck a crazy like downpour of hail like or like a a gust of winds where like it was pulling up the stakes out of our tent so just like crazy weather at night specifically so do not go on this trail without bringing rain jacket rain pants rain cover for your backpack and like a good tent that's like rainproof of course the worst night possible the one night we were dispersed camping we had to go at a really high elevation too just kind of like how the chips fall fell and we knew a storm was coming i knew a storm was coming i just didn't know the extent and we were already sitting at like it's almost seven thousand feet when we were camping waiting for the sun to go down and the clouds start coming in it was terrifying like the lightning was so bright that it would like wake me up from my slumber in my my tent not that i was slumbering well at all but it would like wake me up and i'd be like the lord's coming back like i was thrown off it was so intense there is opportunity to stay in hotels when you pass through towns and we actually only ended up staying in one so out of the nine nights we stayed in one hotel and this was in cormier in italy so this was our day four the night of day four we ended up staying in a hotel i'm so glad we did because i'd collectively gotten like four hours of sleep the last three nights so i that was like a game changer i'm so glad we did it and beautiful views the city or the town of cormier is just fabulous it, we ate an amazing italian food while we we're there we keep joking because we had like we had an appetizer a meal meal number one meal number two meal number three when we were in cormier and that's just how good the food was and again i'll put the name of the hotel in the description that we stayed at but their hotel breakfast you guys mwah, italian yogurt it was so good. It, Italian yogurt, you guys, underrated. It it literally, on the glass bottle, it said, made in Cormier. The yogurt was made in Cormier that I was eating in Cormier. It was epic. And in my YouTube video for Tour de Mont Blanc, I kind of rant about it in the video. It was just insanely good. And it was that much better because the next day on day five, we had to hike 7,000 feet of gain. Yes. I think it was just under 7,000 feet. And it was extremely difficult and just a really, really tough day. So really, really glad that we had that hotel breakfast to fuel us up the next day. 
If you do follow our itinerary, highly recommend staying at that hotel because the next day is tough. Do not go on this trail without Luco tape because the grade of the trail is either like so steep or like so steep going down. Like it, there's no in between. Like it is a steep mother effer. Like it is no mercy. Like make sure you're bringing Luco tape because your blisters just from like the hitting of the toe and just like and even like the water they're just they're gonna be blisters on this trail because I've done other backpacking trails where I had like no problems with blisters and I'm really really glad I brought Luco tape for this one so make sure if you're going on this trail you're bringing Luco tape something that's just so iconic about Tour du Mont Blanc is just meeting people from different cultures and families and countries it's just beautiful so if you do go on this trail I really recommend that you chat it up with people obviously there's definitely some people who aren't fans of Americans and that's fine we love America shout out to America but yeah they just don't like Americans and that's fine but there are also some especially the Flemish people they love Americans go if you find someone like wants to chat like go talk it's so fun meeting people with different cultures and that was definitely one of the highlights of my trip just like just meeting people and like getting to know like one another and just like it's very like community vibe and this trail is extremely safe I have never felt more safe on a trail than Tour du Mont Blanc which says something which definitely says something because like that there was so many people on that trail and there was such like a trail community vibe that was unbeatable there is an option for buses along the way so if you're like wanting to do Tour de Mont Blanc but like 105 miles is too long for you you probably could take buses for like 20 percent of the trail and you're like okay well ew is Tour de Mont Blanc on the street no but there are roads that you can take to like cut which I don't recommend I mean okay if you're like a little bit older and like you want to see it but like it's too many miles for you I totally understand absolutely do the bus thing but I mean if you're young and healthy you should just hike it that's what we did um besides taking a bus to the trailhead we really didn't do any other transportation and so I would just make sure that if you can and you're healthy try to not take the buses because some of my favorite parts of the trail were the parts that could have been skipped by bus Another thing to note is there's something called variants around Tour du Mont Blanc. Variants are like these little like side trails that you can take that go to like a destination like a lake, a mountaintop. And I've heard some of the variants are like insanely cool and I love that. We personally didn't take any variants. One, because it was a little bit harder on like Gut Hook or I forgot the new name of the app, but there's an app that we have our, our GPS on and oh, it's called the Far Out app and it's a little bit more complicated to track like where you are and like relative and being relative to the trail your inter international country we didn't know if we wanted to go like that much off trail the variants are a little bit less marked and like there's some scrambling involved so we just like made an executive decision to not do any variants however I know maybe you can do some research on some cool ones because I know there was like a lake one that was like really epic and I wish we would have done so maybe do some research on that but we personally didn't do it and it was just even without the variants you guys I haven't talked about that much but this is just the most gorgeous trail I have ever been on it's I don't know if any of you guys have done the Wonderland Trail but it's like a more beautiful version of the Wonderland Trail which is hard to believe because Mount Rainier and the Wonderland Trail is just absolutely gorgeous and it is it's basically it's interesting because it's like you are on like these like hillsides lo out looking Mont Blanc and these beautiful glaciers and these beautiful mountains but it's like okay when is the view gonna get bad you know like I'm like okay like when is the view gonna get bad when am I gonna be in the pain cave well you're in the pain cave the entire time but there's no point where you go into like a forest and you don't have any views every single point of this trail has an amazing view and I it's hard like to put into words like when I tell people about it I'm like you just have to go watch my YouTube video about Tour du Mont Blanc because there's no other way to put it and just how gorgeous and magnificent it was. I forgot to mention something about our first night with our luggage because I know someone's gonna ask and I need to say it really quick but basically whenever we packed for Tour du Mont Blanc we were also after we hiked it we went to Annecy and Annecy in France and also we went to the Matterhorn so we had like other clothes we wanted to bring so basically what we did was we put our hiking backpacks in a suitcase with our other clothes that we we're gonna have for like the other days like in, in a duffel bag and we shoved it all in one suitcase and then when we got to the first campground you can pay that first campground that's in the description you can pay them to have like carry hold your luggage for like however my nights are gone it's not outrageous I think it's like 
five euro per bag a night. So yeah, like it's not super bad because it could be worse. And they'll hold your luggage until you get down the trail and then you can pick it up and pack all your stuff back in. Just wanted to keep that note for you guys because I remember it took us a long time to figure out what to do with our luggage. Have Google Translate downloaded on your phone before you get there. 100%. It came in useful a lot. I know it's like a little cringe to like have to like use Google Translate and embarrassing. Just do it. You never, the biggest motivation and tip is that you're never going to see these people again in your life. Like obviously treat them with respect. We want to respect people's land and stuff, but like don't be embarrassed. Use Google Translate if you have to. It helped us a lot. Just kind of figure out what was going on. Regarding cell phone plan, I have parents that worry and need texts from me overnight. Um, I do have the mini inreach, Garmin mini inreach where I can send texts on. However, I also paid for like, I have Verizon on my phone. I paid for like the service and I actually had good service like six of the days when I was on the trail, like majority of the days I was on the trail, I had really great service. And I just paid for Verizon's international plan. And I think I paid like $120, which for me, I, I was vlogging everything it was worth it for me it also put our parents at peace of mind because they have three girls hiking internationally and that concludes this segment on tour du mont blanc i really hope this helped you guys because this is a video i wish i had from an american when i was hiking tour du mont blanc and i hope you have an amazing time the time of your life i am 100 percent confident that i missed a something important or like that i needed to tell you or i'm sure like i there's a question that you have that I didn't address. Put it in the comments below. I'll answer you as best as I can. And you guys, if you're thinking about doing it or planning to do it, it's the best decision of your life. 100% go for it. It is incredible and you won't regret it. If you're watching this video on YouTube, please subscribe. Would love to have you here and there's going to be more to come.